You're listening to The Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas of the Lotri Foundation. In this podcast, Sheikh Zahir explains the aphorisms from Ibn Atal Allah's famous book of wisdoms, Al-Hikam al ataiyah a classical manual of spiritual development. Visit SecretsHub.org for online courses, our reliable answer service, and engaging media. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزلنا علما بفضلك وصلنا الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم آمين um, So we're reached on this book by Shaykh Ibn Ta'illah We reached the um, 36th um, of the uh, hikmah, um, the 36 hikmah of um, uh, of what he um, terms or what is the uh, the etiquette of of going towards Allah Subhanahu wa Taala or making one's uh, of uh, drawing closer. To Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, as uh, uh, we as servants of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala <coughs> have a right to, and we owe it to ourselves and to our Lord. We owe it to our Lord to draw closer <coughs> to Him in every waking moment, and even in our moments of rest, uh, with the right intention, we can make even our rest and our sleep ibadah. So we're never, uh, we're never out of, <clears throat> we're never completely out of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except in those moments uh, like relieving oneself in the washroom, uh, or making dua before and after, because it's something of, that helps our body to stay healthy, <clears throat> to relieving our ourselves. So there are outward <clears throat> actions that we do uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes some of them, he makes them obligatory, some of them he makes them non-obligatory, he makes it sunnah or nafil. Uh, some of them are uh, actions of the, uh, of the heart, some of them are actions of the limbs. Thinking well of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an action of the of the heart. And we're obliged to think well of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's basic belief. That's in our belief system. Uh, and actions are part of our belief. Actions are part of the... Uh, it affirms what we believe in our hearts, our actions. So the salah that we pray affirms the fact that we have <coughs> that we have iman and it affirms the fact that we are uh, faithful it affirms the fact that we are faithful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so we pray or our actions of coming to the masjid or that or actions of reading Quran or actions of helping others or actions of giving zakat it affirms the fact uh, of our iman. There are, uh, as we uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as we try to uh, take on traits that are uh, praiseworthy, that are praiseworthy traits, like ikhlas, humility, honesty, truthfulness, uh, Zuhud, um, abstinence or not non-attachment to the things that we possess or the things of this world these are traits, there's praiseworthy traits and we try to leave the traits that are um, that are detrimental uh, to us uh, like what? like showing off like has, uh, hasid like envy and the like backbiting these are traits because what happens is that they uh, they make our hearts uh, black. They make our hearts 
feel uh, far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> because of the actions that it caught, because of the actions that, that are fueled uh, by these traits, the actions that are fueled by the traits. The heart, when it comes into uh, submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it gains consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the heart can witness and the heart has sight, just like the eyes have sight. The heart has sight too. It's a different type of sight. The heart has sight that is unlike the sight of the eyes. <clears throat> our eyes, our eye vision is limited <clears throat> to what is <clears throat> periphery or what is on the exterior. So our eyesight can distinguish colors. Some people can. <clears throat> our eyesight can distinguish, um, it can distinguish depth. Like we can see something in front and behind. We can distinguish the, uh, the size of rooms and so on. So our eyes can distinguish depth. Our eyes can distinguish form. We can distinguish form. This is the sitting, this is standing. <clears throat> this is erect, this is crooked, this is bent. Our eyes can distinguish forms or shapes. Our eyes can distinguish shapes. The heart, <clears throat> this is <clears throat> eye vision. The heart can also uh, have uh, a type of sight. And it's called basiro. Um, call it, translate it insight. It can be... <clears throat> Translated as heart vision, whatever you want to translate it as, it's called basiro. That is not the the sight of the of the outward. It's not the sight of the outward. That sight, the heart that has sight that has basiro in it, and there's different levels of it, is an intuitive sight. It's an intuitive sight. And it's a sight that's brought about by consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is brought about consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the servant gets more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that he purifies his heart, then the servant will start to realize. And the realization is what is important. And so the servant... As he, as he draws closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his heart becomes pure because he's working on A, picking up praiseworthy traits and B, ridding oneself of <clears throat> ridding oneself of traits that are blameworthy ridding oneself of traits that are blameworthy that would lead to sin as a servant is on that process as a servant is on the process and everyone is on that process or everyone should be on that process and everyone should be on that process or are in that process whether they realize it or not their heart becomes pure and their consciousness is becomes stronger becomes stronger and has more depth in it so their their intuitive insight becomes even stronger becomes even stronger and this is where the, the servant, uh, this is where the servant goes from, uh, the servant can go from, uh, from wanting to see proof, wanting to see uh, the, uh, the outward things uh, in uh, giving him certainty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He leaves that because it's, it's one of the steps of the seerah of insight, of heart, vision, that whatever you see on the outward, the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that <clears throat> the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you see, it strengthens your conviction in Allah, in the Khaliq, in the Creator. And the signs that you see, it strengthens your conviction of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your Lord and, it, and exists. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. So the, the eyesight of the eyes strengthens the basira. It strengthens the inward sight. 
or the heart vision strengthens it. Those are those. This is a certain maqam or a certain step. But there's other steps. There's other steps. There's this, there's the step of of which the heart comes to that it doesn't see any worth to the outward world. It doesn't see any worth to the outwardness of this world, to the to the created being. It doesn't see any worth to the created being. And all it sees is the creator. All it sees is the creator. It sees the actions of the creator within the world. That, that's what it sees. It sees the, the and it goes to uh, from being, it goes to non-being, it goes to, uh, it, it has the realization of the Quranic verse, Kullu in halikun illa wajahu, everything is perishing except the countenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything in the universe is perishing except what? Except the countenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is in existence we are in existence, but we are in existence because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deeming it and commanding it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are dependent on, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to exist. We are dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent in his existence, is independent of anything and anyone. But we are dependent. All of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dependent on their existence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone who has realization in it, someone who has realization in it, his basira is on another level. His insight, his, his heart vision, spiritual vision, whatever you want to call it, is on a different level. Is on a different level. <clears throat> and that level let's call it consciousness, that level of consciousness, that level of consciousness, there are traits to it. The first level of, maybe I should read the hikmah, anyhow, I'll read the hikmah after I'm done, the explanation of it. That level of, uh, that level of the first level in which the ayat, the, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points you in the direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it can become it can it can become challenging. It can. Because the outward world can become challenging. Difficulties, words people speak, actions that they do uh, can challenge it. Because you're you're looking through the eyes of uh, the 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 worldly eyes you're looking through. And so People can, people can come into uh, that uh, frame of reference and disturb you to think about their actions or, or, or think about the words that they spoke. And it can disturb you or challenge you or it can leave you uh, with stress or anxiety. It can leave you with stress or anxiety, their actions and their words. This is the first level. Those who have reached, those who have the second level, which they see, everything as being an action of Allah. Everything. They see everything, and people have reached this level. They see action, they see everything as actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not phased by the difficulties that come to them. They're not phased, this is the outcome of it. They're not phased by the, uh, uh, by the difficulties of this world. They're not. They're not phased by the uh, uh, they don't doubt at all that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for them is good. No matter if they're facing hardship, they still have that certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for them. They have that certainty and it doesn't fade. That certainty does not fade. It doesn't matter what happens to them or what comes to them. It doesn't matter of the, of the, even if the difficulty that comes is hard for them to bear. But they don't leave that certainty that it's Allah who wants good for them. They don't question it. They don't question that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for them. They don't question it at all. 
this is a level of this is this is a level of certainty. It's a level of of basira. It's a level of basira. And then there's a level of basira that is beyond it. The level of basira that is beyond it, in which which one sees only Allah, <coughs> and one does not see oneself. One sees only Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and one does not see even oneself. One does not see oneself. So this level of certainty is a level of certainty of the servant who has complete consciousness. His heart is enraptured with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what he sees is his creator at all times. What he sees is his creator at all times. With the removal of the outward, the outward is removed. And so a person like this, if you say to a person like this, in this maqam, in this level, oh, uh, can we help you with the difficulty? He'll say to you, what difficulty? A person like this, if you say to them, let me help you. Help, let me help you in the challenge that you're facing. He said, he'll say to you, what challenge? What challenge? Because... He's not living. He's, his, his perspective is not this world. His perspective is not this world. His consciousness is not this world. It may be hard to understand how, how is it possible for someone to be like this? How is it possible for someone to be like this? It is possible because everything is possible with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who makes everything possible to the servant. So a servant who is striving <clears throat> to cure and to purify his heart can reach that level of certainty. <clears throat> that all he sees is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all he sees. All he sees is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the la, the one of the stages is that the, the world is removed from one's eyesight. The world is removed. And all he sees is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All he sees is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's all he considers. And that's all he thinks. And that's his consciousness. And his consciousness has become where he sees and he has insight to sira that is complete. That is complete. And so non, you know, he sees his non-being it's completely removed and all he sees and he has consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ibn Ta'ala, he says, Shu'a'un basirati yashhaduka qurbahu minka. So he says the rays of insight, of vision, shows you his closeness to you. The rays of um, insight, basira, this, this uh, heart vision, it shows you his closeness uh, to you. وَعَيْنُ الْبَصِيرَةِ تُشْهِدُكَ أَدَمُكَ لِوُجُودِهِ And the and the eye of spiritual vision or heart vision, the eye of it, it shows you what your non-existence in with his existence. It removes you, it removes you that that عَيْنُ الْبَصِيرَةِ that eye vision, that, that eye vision of the heart uh, which is more specific it removes what it removes you of your non-being in comparison to his being and so you see that you're you are just you know when everything is perishing as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says accept his countenance accept his countenance so it's removed and then he says well haqqal basirati yushhiduka wujudahu wala wujud يُجْحِدُكَ وُجُودَهُ لَا عَدَمُكَ وَلَا وُجُودَكَ And so he says the, uh, the truth of, of vision, of, eye, of, of heart vision, the truth of it shows you his being. Neither your non-being or being. Neither your non-being or your being. The truth of it shows you only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's existence. Only shows you his being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being. And so everything is, everything is removed, including yourself, 
including yourself. And this person is a person who, uh, he, as I said, he lives or she lives uh, in which they only uh, consider what Allah wants of them. They only consider what Allah wants of them. They don't consider what they want at all. They don't have any any need, desire, anything. They don't they don't look at what they want. They look at what Allah wants. So when they wake up in the morning, they say, "What is Allah going to do with me today? What is Allah?" People wake up and they say, "What am I going to do today?" People wake up and they say, "What am I going to do today?" This is what I need to do. I need to go here. I need to do this. I need to. I have this to do. I have this to do. You know, I have that to do. I, I need to do this before this and so on. There are people who wake up and they do, and they, this is what they say, and this is what they think. There are people who reach this state that will wake up and they'll say, what would Allah, what will Allah do with me today? That's haqqal yaqeen. They're completely removed from seeing themselves in any of the actions of this world, and all they see is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a stage. And it is a stage of the servant. And that servant is a servant who will not think twice about difficulty. Because they don't realize they're in a difficulty. Because all they see is the manifestations of, of Allah's love with them. So they don't even consider it a difficulty. Or they don't consider it a praiseworthy state or status. They don't. They consider it from Allah. And it's from Allah, that's it. That's all they, that's all they, their basir or their insight is. That's all it is. And they see them, they see themselves as just what? They see themselves as conduits. Conduits of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants in this world. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants of this world. And so they're not with, they don't withhold themselves from uh, from what uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to do. And so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places them in a position to give, they understand that because people ask, so they give. Because they see themselves as what conduits. So they don't with they don't withhold if uh, if they if he, whatever whatever they see themselves as that uh, they see themselves as uh, as what this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they don't see their being or non-being they don't see it at all they just see it as this is the truth of certainty this is the truth of certainty and the uh, and this is the this is the reality of the Prophet Islam, completely removed from this world completely removed uh, of this world but completely removed uh, from the care uh, of this world, from the care of this world. And so whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determined, the Prophet Muhammad Islam had the rida of it, complete and complete submission to it. Complete submission to it. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determined, he was completely submitted to it. That that's form that's part of the outward reality of this. Part of the outward reality is complete submission. When you have, when you reach that level of basira, that level, you have complete submission to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Complete submission, both in terms of the of the heart uh, and the body and the mind, is complete. It's complete, and you're removed, and you're removed, and this is the. Uh, uh, this is the maqam of baqa. That, that's what it is. Complete removal of the self from uh, from existence into the witnessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, hopefully it makes sense. Can't explain it any other way. Basira is that insight, spiritual insight is, is, is that uh, one who is on a path uh, of cleansing and becoming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will understand uh, and it, it it's worthy of 
uh, of being on a path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was worthy of it? Is that the stress and the anxiety of this world is completely removed from one? Completely removed from one. The stress and the anxiety of this world and the worth of this world is completely removed. It's completely removed. Completely. And so a person like this don't have a lot of things to say. A person who is in that maqam does not have a lot of things to say of badness of this world because they see good. Because that's because if you have a consciousness, complete submission to Allah, then everything is good because it comes from one's Lord. Everything. Every single thing is good in terms because it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us, forgive us, have mercy upon us, forgive our elders, our parents, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, forgive us, protect our parents, give them good health and long life. Those who are sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal them and cure them. Those who have passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our children on his deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our children on the path of truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them success in this world and next world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, increase us in knowledge and practice of the deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in closeness to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us complete submission to him, to his will and to his knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us conscious of him in all of our moments, sleeping and awake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, guide us, make our homes from amongst the homes of the believers and make our last words our best words. Subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamdulillah. Wa atubu ilayk wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas. Help Seekers Hub spread the light of guidance to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.